Don here in Florida and one of the big questions I always see out there is do you grease or do you oil your milling machine and this can be confusing because you see grease zerts on there but you're supposed to oil it okay now a lot of machines have a central oiling point where you just add oil and you pump it and it oils all the points but if you don't have that then you have to oil each point individually a lot of guys take grease guns and uh, fill them up with oil and hold them upside down and pump them like that but then you have a line that's just kind of dangling and it can be a little bit clumsy and when you're, you're pumping the, the nozzle can tilt can't side to side and you get oil spewing out all over the place and whatnot so I came up with another solution a few years back on how to do this originally I took a my original idea was I just took an Eagle type oil can and put a adapter in here with a greaser nozzle at the end and uh, use that but my daughter had a hard time pumping that because it's just your your trigger finger so I decided to step up and add a little capacity and a little ease of movement and I built this one here I took a grease gun and what I did was I just gutted it and I put a rubber hose in the inlet port got rid of the spring and I put a wheel valve stem at the bottom and what you do is you just put a little bit of oil in add a little bit of air pressure to it it pushes oil up through the rubber line and then when you squeeze it you just lubricate your machine and this allows you to stay square on the grease zerk you can do it with one hand you can get up in odd places with it it, it works works out really good uh, I broke the valve stem on this one this morning when I was coming out here to start this video so now I got to put a new valve stem in but I thought as long as I'm gonna do this and I have a spare grease gun why don't we just build a whole new one now there are a few differences between these grease guns even though they look somewhat the same uh, one this grease gun had just a round inlet port here and all I had to do was insert the hose into the inlet port and it stuck and as you can see after a number of years of being in oil the line swollen up a little bit but that's okay it still works um, on this model here and I'll get this out of the way now because I'm not going to talk about it on this model here the ports a little bit different it has a rectangular port here and it's blocked off by this here so you don't go directly to the port but I still think we can make this work. I made a, a similar one to this work uh, a little while back. So let's try this and, and see what uh, we can do, okay? Okay, before we do anything, uh, I wanna clean this up. And I think the first step in cleaning it up is gonna be get rid of this. So get rid of that. And then we're gonna get rid of the spring and the handle. There we go. Just took off across the floor. Okay, now let's get her cleaned up. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. Just want to get the, the worst of it off, the grease and whatnot. I, I hate playing with that grease when I'm making something. So just kind of work that off of there. And that's pretty clean. Okay, so that cleaned up pretty decently. So we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, gasket out of here. We're gonna save that for later. And we're gonna measure this diameter here. We wanna 1.422. 1.422. So we're gonna make a plug that size that will fit up in there that we can screw a nipple into and these were some cutoffs that I had I guess the kids made them and I was gonna use this I was just gonna cut it down but then I decided you know what if I screw that up in there and I put a locking nut on there I can 
control the depth into here and then just lock the nut it doesn't matter and then slip a hose over that so that's what we're going to do and i got a chunk of aluminum here i guess you saw me pick that up there at the flea market the other day so we're going to turn this and we'll see if we can do this in as as few operations as possible so let's go on over to the lathe okay the first thing we got to do is drill a three quarter inch hole here um normally i've been able to get away with doing half inch holes but the part that comes right out here for that handle to lock into goes beyond my half inch point so we're going to have to step it up and do a three quarter and i say step it up and do a three quarter because these valve stems come in different sizes here on the rubber it goes from half inch to three quarter so uh, there's nothing really in between that i can use by the way when i'm working on the equipment out here i noticed that this camera picks up way more noise than what's actually being exhibited so for me the i play the radio at a low level and i i hear the radio more than i hear this equipment all right let's see what we can get off of here go kind of slow with this not push it Okay, so let's see how this fits in there. Put a little grease on it just to help it along because there's actually a special tool for putting these in and I have one but it's not here so I'm going to have to do it with pliers so we're going to try to make it as easy on ourselves as possible. So there we go. Get her in just like that and see if we can wedge her up there we go and she popped right in and she should self seal just like that so now we have a, a way to get our air in so the next thing we need to do is make a plug so I guess sticking out there a lot but it's pretty darn rigid so there she goes okay so one point four two two so we're gonna take over half an inch off of this thing well luckily we don't have to take much depth I was running a digit off there making more cuts than I had to that was kind of dumb Okay, so now we've got our plug and it should fit right into there nicely, which it does. So we're gonna use this as the nipple. The nice thing about this is that I can bring this right down flush to this point and then lock it like this. Let me get a wrench. So now I can lock that down into place and it'll make a nice seal and a good place to put our hose and 
and originally I was going to channel this because there would be no way for the oil to get from the center point to here uh, but instead of channeling that I decided I'm just going to take a Dremel tool and make a slight groove right there for the oil to flow through so let's do that I had to change my bit out And that should allow enough oil to channel into the feed port there. Remember, this is the oil is under slight pressure, so it's going to come up and push in here, push through there, and into the port. So let's go ahead and assemble this now. I'm going to use just a slight amount of clear RTV around the edges. And it probably doesn't need it. But, you know, I've spent so many years in maintenance that I just feel better using it. I'm going to take out the excess here, smooth it out just a little bit. And then drop it in. It really doesn't matter which way it goes, it just has to go in. And the gasket, I'm going to use the tube to seat everything down there and make sure it actually goes. There we go. Okay, whoops, see that? My gasket popped up. Probably the uh, tube drew it up. There we go. All right, let me get some hose. And we'll use uh, slightly less than the length of the here. So we want about that much right there. And oh boy, it's in there tight. And that should do it, just like that. So now let's uh, assemble it. Also, it's a good idea to put a little teflon tape on this when you're doing it teflon will help seal it in case any oil wants to find its way out so and then we can reassemble it make sure our gasket's in place down there yeah and i'm just reassembling this is to check it first make sure everything goes properly okay good so that's all there is to it now i'm going to take a little bit of uh 20 weight oil put a little bit of 20 weight in here and i wouldn't put more than half make sure we're not leaking out the bottom seems to be all right there no leaks okay Make sure it's on there nice and tight. All right, let's go try it out on the machine, see what happens. All right, this is gonna be our first attempt with this to see how it goes. And actually, I should get some rags because there may be grease coming out of that from the beginning. So let's, let's get the rags there for the grease. All right. See that grease, it did start to push out there, so. There she goes. The air pressure behind there is actually pushing that grease just by me holding the handle in. And see the oil coming out the end? That's how I know I've got too much pressure in there. It only needs about a pound of pressure. There we go. Now we're, we're pushing oil straight into that. So let's find another spot here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but there's oil coming out the end of there. And that's because I've put way too much pressure in it so we'll go ahead and use it by oiling the knee and see how easy this goes you can feel the oil just pushing right in there real nice 
even when it goes down to just a PSI or half a PSI, it, it just pushes right in there really nice. No fighting whatsoever to get it oiled. And I can do this all one-handed. And you know, the easier it is to do something, the more you'll do it, so. Yeah, see, I've still got way too much pressure in there. Yeah, see, I put the camera down. <laughs> I got to oil in it. I oiled, oiled the whole machine in, in just a minute. So, um, yeah, now, see, it's not leaking out the end. Now the pressure's gone down a little bit. It's still pushing oil just fine. Once it gets down to, you know, half, one, two PSI, it, it works beautifully. So that's about it for this. Okay, so I guess that's going to about cover it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed putting together one of these oiling guns. I found them very useful, uh, very cheap to make. I buy them for a dollar a piece at the flea market, and as you've seen, they're very easy to put together. And the last thing I'd like to share is a mistake I made. I had my air compressor regulator still set at 120 PSI. Normally, I have that drop down to around 30 PSI for blowing chips and stuff. So I was injecting way more air into this thing than it needed. Honestly, it only needs about one PSI to function. And when you have your regulator set at 30, it's very easy to control it at a lower PSI. I was probably dumping 75 to 80 PSI into this. So I guess that's gonna just about cover it. From Florida, Don out.